Hello, welcome to the American Road Trip. Well, I'm going to talk about my first road trip car, which was also my first car. Now, I was, I was very happy that day when my dad uh, picked me up uh, from the airport. I was coming back from visiting my, my mom and picked me up in my, my new car that he gave me. It was a used car, but it was new to me, of course. And uh, uh, he didn't tell me it was my car uh, right away. We just kind of got in the car and and started driving and and he said uh, why don't you drive so um i started out driving actually we didn't just get in the car i he said that was the first thing he said he said why don't you drive okay and i was liking the car a lot uh it was a very nice car and then uh later he said uh, so uh, how do you like the car and i said i i like it a lot it's very nice he said well it's yours i got it for you <laughs> i was i was blown away and my first car was uh 1979 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Boy, that was a nice, nice car. Today I have very fond memories of that car, and uh, one day I'm going to get another one. But uh, it was a, it was very very nice car. It was uh, uh, blue. It was blue. It had a 350 um, engine, had a th three-speed automatic, and four-barrel uh, uh, carburetor. Had dual exhaust from the factory. Uh, I think that uh, when you're looking at buying a, a car like a Camaro and you're looking for a Z28 and I think there's some there's some cars out there that might say they're Z28s but they're just they're not really that's a good way to find out if it's a real Z28 is to see if it has uh, dual exhaust on it. it came from the factory that way very nice car beautiful and uh, I really enjoyed that car uh, I remember a few things uh, about it uh, driving uh, coming over the mountain uh, from West LA into the San Fernando Valley, I got my first ticket. Yep, uh, my first speeding ticket. And apparently the highway patrol officer said, didn't, didn't you see me when you when you went by me? I said, no. <laughs> I wasn't racing or anything, but it was probably, I don't know, maybe 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. And um, I was still 17 probably, maybe 16, no, maybe 17. And um, so I had to take my dad to court. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I remember going in to see the judge, and, and uh, it was in a private room, or like an office, I guess probably because I was a minor still. And uh, so it was basically the judge talking to me, and let me know that that was not a good thing. And, and my dad was there being very stern about it as well, and uh, gave me the option of going to traffic school. And I said, no. My dad said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> so I got to go to my first traffic school too. Um, being the road, uh, road trip car that it was, uh, I did drive it to uh, Oregon, from Los Angeles to uh, Oregon, where uh, my mom was, and that was a great, great trip. Went from, went on the coast, actually, the coast route, which was the 101, mostly. And, um, you know, I wasn't really, uh, I always drove that car right around the speed limit. And, you, know, you know, that age, and, and you don't really know what cars can do, and, uh, you know, you experiment a little bit, but I, I was just really careful most of the time, so I kept it right around the speed limit. Great car, still, you know, didn't get that great a gas mileage. It was a three-speed automatic, so um, an overdrive would certainly have been good. And when I do get another one, I'm going to put an overdrive in it, and uh, that'll be great. Made that drive, I probably got gas about every time before it got half, uh, half, halfway mark on the gas tank. Um, I guess I was a little paranoid because, you know, there wasn't a lot of gas stations on that route. So you, I never really knew when I'd get the next one. So I didn't really want to make that gamble. So I stopped quite a bit. But plus that route uh, going up to Oregon takes longer anyway, simply because, you know, it's got a lot more turns and, and uh, the road goes through a bunch of towns as well. You have to slow down, uh, back down to 35, 45, whatever it, whatever it was from the freeway, uh, freeway speed. So that was, that was a pretty pretty neat trip. I also remember when I showed up uh, uh, at high school with my new car, uh, that was my junior year, and there was, a, there was a, a guy there named Gary who later turned out to be one of my best friends. We really didn't talk too much in 10th grade, but when I showed up with my new car, suddenly we were best friends. <laughs> that was probably more on his side, it's like, hey, nice car, maybe we can go somewhere. But, as we got to got to know each other, we turned out yeah, with pretty good friendship. Um, so definitely, you know, attracted to, attracted people in that car. It was very nice. And then I did something that I regretted, regretted, regretted. Uh, I wanted a, a new car. I had a new job, and I really wanted to uh, 
you know, get something else. Something uh, like a, a Suzuki Samurai. Brand new Suzuki Samurai. And I, I was able to go to the dealership and do a deal all on my own. I traded in that car. That was a mistake. I, at the time, it seemed like a pretty good thing to do. But uh, you know, I liked the Suzuki Samurai. It was really neat. It's four wheel drive. That was exciting. So there's nothing wrong with that car. It didn't have any power. Uh, in fact, that'll be another video about my Suzuki Samurai uh, drafting behind trucks, making that trip on the freeway. That's fun. And uh, but um, but yeah, it was a mistake. But I do miss the car. It was a great car. So you know, I think they're out there. I think the price wise, if, uh, if it's a car that you wanna you wanna get, uh, the prices tend to tend to stay high. I think a little bit now because most of them that I see are are either fixed up. Um, but even the ones that are just so far that you have to you have to restore it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of money too, so the right one will come along, I'm pretty sure, but uh, what a great car that was. So that was my, that was my first car, my first road trip car, and uh, uh, so there you go. So thanks for watching, and we'll, we'll see you next time. These fully race-prepped Chevy Camaros will be driven by 12 of the best drivers in the world in the International Race of Champions. Introducing the 1979 version of the Ultimate Camaro. Camaro Z28, from people who know what performance is all about, Chevrolet.